You talk about the idea of having a plan in place to help you um, pretty much tick all those boxes you, that you talked about. You know, what, what do you do at the point at which you get a cluster of losses and how do you tone back your exposure? When you're talking in terms of that trading plan, you're talking about a written down document where basically you uh, pre-think through all of the different scenarios that could potentially happen in the market and then make a decision based on how you will respond should those situations arise and have that documented. Is that how you handle it? That's right. I'm sorry, my slides keep going ahead here. Um, that's definitely correct. And in my book, Smart Trading Plans, it comes with that trading plan template and it's got sections in there about you know, considering your market exposure guidelines and what are you going to do if you hit that cluster of losses and how you're going to handle it. So it's like with any business, you've got to think of the worst case scenarios of things that could happen and have a plan as to how you will handle it if it does happen. And if you are following strict money management, so you're position sizing every trade, you have an initial stop loss in place and you trail a stop loss once things go your way, you are managing your money with the goal of protecting your um, your downside so you know what your maximum loss is going to be on a trade and maximising your profits by moving your stop losses as things go your way. And if you manage a portfolio heat where you, you make sure you don't open up more than a set number of positions at once that are, are new trades that you haven't got your initial stop loss up to break even, then you're managing your worst case drawdown in the market at all times. Yep. So they're all the things that need to go into that trading plan. And I, in my book and the template that you get with the book, it's got those sections in there for you to fill in and answer those questions. Mm. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about handling. Sorry? No, I was just going to say, yeah, how do you handle losses? <laughs> well, we've just been through handling losses. Oh, sorry, the, the, how do you handle uh, a bear market? So if you um, are at the stage where you're ready to trade a bear market, bear markets can be very profitable. So um, let's have a look at basically the long and the short of it. As we know, there's, there's two main market trends. We've got the bull market and the bear market and there's sideways markets in between, the two of them. So the bull market's the most favourable market that everybody knows how to profit. Um, and it's, that's just where the geniuses are made. But when the market trends change and we hit a bear market, do you, have a, do you know how to handle that? What are you going to do when the market change occurs? Um, will you trade a bear market or not? So you can either hang on in hope and believe your shares will eventually come good again. To me, that's not a strategy. That's just digging your head in the sand and hoping things will get better one day. They may do, but they may not. I mean, there were some companies in the global financial crisis that disappeared. I mean, ABC Learning Centres, um, Centro Properties, well, it's still in the stock market, but <laughs> when it's only worth 20 cents to $6, that's a big difference and it hasn't recovered. Um, so you, you don't want to hang on in hope. You basically want to act on stop losses for long trades and then decide, well, am I going to stay out of the market now until the conditions become favourable favorable again or can I short sell? Another strategy a lot of people talk about is averaging down, which is where you continue to buy shares as they fall. Now, I don't believe in that strategy. I'd rather not be in the market and wait till they start to recover and buy them while they're rising. Uh, because who knows how far they're going to fall and I wouldn't like to be buying ABC learning centres as it was falling because it then disappeared. <laughs> so that's not a strategy to me but that's what they call averaging down. So for me, um, I act on stop losses for my long trades if they're hit and I start short selling. So, But you don't have to short sell if it's not something that you're comfortable doing. You can sit out of the market and there's many traders out there that don't trade through bear markets but it's deciding what you're comfortable doing and preparing yourself for when it happens. So you need to pre-plan that and as I mentioned, you, you put that in your trading plan and, and have an action plan as to what you're going to do. So if you're a long-term trader where you're, you, you're trading for the long-term, like the buy and hold strategy, um, then you may act on stop losses for your long trades and just sit out of the market until the conditions become favourable and there's nothing wrong with that you're not holding shares that are falling very heavily in price, you've taken some profits out of the market. And then your goal is to buy back in when the recovery starts to come. And, and that's what I do with my weekly long-term system. If you're a short to medium-term trader as well, which is what I do with my daily system, then you're going to act on stop losses for your long trades as they hit and you're going to start short selling. So that's exactly what I do. So 
what is short selling? I mean, in a bear market, as I've mentioned, this is one of the hardest markets to trade because short selling is not very common in Australia. Um, for those that are international, it, it's more talked about in other countries and it's much easier to do. Um, it's not quite so easy in Australia and, and then we also saw a ban occur during the global financial crisis as well. So short selling is sometimes seen as a strategy that only professional traders use to undertake um, during a bear market to profit, but anybody can do it. Um, you can do it through options, warrants, shares or CFDs. So, and as I mentioned, there was a period of time during the global financial crisis where there was a ban on it. Um, if you will use the if you were trading options or with a specific CFD provider, you could still short sell. So it wasn't banned 100% on every single instrument. So what is short selling, um, which was a question I just asked before. It's similar to buying a share. The only difference is you're reversing the order of the trade. So instead of buying the share and then selling it, you're actually selling the share first with the goal of buying it back at a later date. And the whole goal is that you will profit if you buy it back at a lower price. So you just reverse in the order of what you would normally do. So t in order to do it, you need to use a broker that offers this facility. And this is usually limited to full service brokers because what the broker actually has to do is they have to go and borrow the shares from somebody who owns them and then you sell them in the open market. So you actually sell their shares in the market and your goal is to buy them back at a certain point in time. So you really, you're expecting that the share will fall in price and you will buy them back at a lower price in the future. And what your goal um, is, is to profit from that. And when you buy them back, that's when the person that you borrowed them from gets their shares back. So you do pay a borrowing fee in order to do that. And, um, and, that's, and also have to put some money up for margin to do the trade as well. In Australia, you're limited to the top 200 shares because you're dealing with the most liquid shares and they're usually the ones that the managed funds and the institutions are trading so the brokers can get access to them. And your profit will always be diff the difference between what the sell price is and what you buy it back at. So if you exit at a lower price, then obviously you're going to make a profit. If you exit at a higher price, you're going to incur a loss. So as I said, everything is simply reversed. So to actually short sell um, another method is through CFDs. So with the shares you have to borrow, somebody's stock to sell it in the market. There's also another instrument called CFDs. Now CFDs are not available in all countries, um, but a lot of countries they are. And all they are is a simulated stock market. So with the CFD, you um, simply just place a sell order in the market and you just sell. That's, that's how you enter a trade. You just simply go, you, you've chosen the, the share that you want to short sell, you go into your, the platform and you just place a sell order. That might be to sell at market or sell at a set price. Then what I do is I set a buy stop order. So wherever my initial stop loss is, which will be at a higher price than where the share price is, I then set a buy stop order and for the same number that I'm entering in at. And then if the share moves higher and that stops hit, then I'm going to be taking another trade. But as it moves lower, I'm going to move that buy stop order lower as well. And eventually at some point my stop will be hit and I will buy back the same quantity of CFDs and that closes out the trade. And once again, my profit or loss is the difference between the sell price and the buy price. But there's no third party in the middle where you've got to borrow somebody's shares to do it. The same with options, you can do put options. Um, you don't need a third party involved to do it. You're just using a put option instead of a call option. 